I hope you like this new bouncing graphic. Actually, I hope you don't like it. Actually, I really don't care. I just thought it was better than keeping a static picture, so there's like this bouncing uh, picture of the um, Care Bear that I use right now. Uh, the idea eventually is to get away from the Care Bears thing and uh, come up with something completely different while just keeping the initials. Uh, uh, other people have done this, like what used to be called Pure Nintendo Magazine, now just goes by PNM. And uh, what used to be Nintendo Force Magazine now goes by NF Magazine. So those are two examples, again, of a Nintendo twist. I was uh, looking at topics, and I didn't see any, I don't mean the website topics. I was going to video game websites, GameSpot, Game Informer, and uh, obviously the uh, Nintendo site, and Sega, excuse me. Well, that, that's, a, that's an old slip. So in my brain, Sega is always going to be number two. Anyways, no, I actually, it's like, um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Sega, number two, all that stuff. I don't have anything against Sega at all. Genesis is my favorite game system because I look at it, um, it's not the variety of games. The Super NES and Genesis have the same game. I, this is from an American perspective. I don't know anything about worldwide perspectives. But growing up for those few years, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo had pretty much the same game in, in comparison to the anything else, actually. So, like, if I wanted, say, on Super Nintendo, Paperboy 2, I can also get Paperboy 2 on the Sega Genesis. If I wanted Samurai Showdown later, a few years later, I can get Samurai Showdown on the Genesis. Uh, some games are night and day. For instance, Pitfall. Well, Pitfall's on both. Two. Pit Fighter on the Genesis is actually very playable, while Pit Fighter on the Super Nintendo is I mean, quite possibly the worst official Super Nintendo game ever made. I don't count that Hong Kong whatever because that's not a real game. Having the bouncing graphic here means uh, whenever I take a sip of coffee or I need to do something, you don't have to worry about it. Your eyes are still visually looking at this thing. Um, if you've been looking at it for two minutes so far, I really think that just treat this like the radio. Don't, don't watch this thing. It will give you a headache. Um, and I'm not liable for that. I have warned you right now after two, three minutes, don't look at it. Just let my voice play if you want to hear what I have to say. Which has then, you know, went ahead and brought up this, is that I don't... Uh, I don't care uh, right now. This is all I can do. My, my footage has to be remade. I was just talking to the wife about that last night. I'm like, my footage now has to be remade for both Grumpy Bear Plays and the Las Vegas Time Machine, which most of those are my commercials. And that, that blows chunks because, well, um, I, I had to take five terabytes of data and somehow cram it into, I, I would say, 0.75 terabytes. What I found out was a lot of backup redundancy. I found files going back to when I used to work at TV stations. Like, wow. Not like I'm ever going back to those particular stations if I do get a job in television. If I got a job in television, I don't, I don't want to be on the air. I have been on the air numerous times, and uh, no, I'm not. I don't have any of those recorded because it's not a big deal to me. To me, it's not a big deal. No, I don't want to be on the air. Um, what I do want is I love the technical side of things. They they could not pay me enough, or or as little, I guess, to not be on the technical side of things. I just I just love it and. Uh, these uh, people who come in with IT degrees and stuff like that, they don't, they don't know anything. Because there has to be a passion for creation there, not a, 
passion. Well, there's no passion when there's maintenance. Um, like throw throw a ball up in the air. Scientifically, yes, there's a point in time for a very, very, very short, unmeasurable point in time. The ball stops and then starts coming down. That's not true. It is measurable. Everything is measurable. Um, like let's let's use the the metric system with seconds. You know, the, let's say there's seconds, uh, deci seconds, centi seconds, milliseconds, kiloseconds. Um, yeah, there's there's a point in time when throwing a ball up in the air, it stops, comes to a complete dead stop. Well, okay, but how much time is it? Nonetheless, it stops. But let's not take that. The ball is either going up or it's going down. That, that stop, that so-called maintenance between the time when the ball, the arc, goes ahead and stops is unmeasurable. And that's exactly what maintenance is. When somebody gets a job, I don't mean a state maintenance worker, that his job is to maintain what I'm talking about here, obviously, is people who take technical jobs without the passion for the technology and the creation from that technology. And um, that leads me to this, then. What is old? When I was a child, when I was a child, when I was born, there was a, a TRS-80 in my house. It wasn't a good computer, and we later upgraded to a different model than TRS-80. I don't have any of these models available anymore. All I have is a couple of data tapes that I've overridden with music. I mean, what was I going to do with the data, right? So, uh, the idea was that every two, maybe three years, we'd get a new computer. On the other hand, when we bought, um, I, I don't, I have to figure this out because there are 2600 and uh, ColecoVision cartridges. So I believe that uh, I think my father had a ColecoVision when it is. Uh, he uh, what did he do? And he was in the army. He was in. Um, computers in the army. That, that's about all I can tell. This is over 30 years, almost 40 years, folks. I, I couldn't tell you what he really did in the army, and uh, I believe he had the ColecoVision, games like Duke of Hazzard, War Games, Donkey Kong, stuff like that. And I believe that we had the, the Sears Super Arcade 2, and obviously all the games that went with it. And some games I bought new, like I bought Burger Time. 15 years ago, that was new. Um, I recently bought King Kong in the blue cartridge uh, recently, as in five years ago. But, but that's the point um, I'm making here. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still buying games for my Super Arcade 2. Sears, Super Arcade 2. Um, and the idea behind that was, you know, would we need to upgrade to something? Well, we, we did upgrade to something. We upgraded to the NES, and we upgraded from the uh, Trash 80 to the TI-99. I mean, again, I don't know that model. I saw another one of those come up for sale at a Savers, and I passed on it, and I just realized I have software for it, and peripherals. And yeah. So, um, I still have my TI-99, but it dismantled. I, I wanted to look inside of it because I was told there's a radioactive chip in it. Yeah, there isn't. Uh, well, what we got then, as in my family, my, mo my mother and I, was um, the Atari, or no, it's not an Atari, the Sears Super Arcade 2 in the ColecoVision where it had, um, like put in a box and forgotten. Just forgotten. I played the TI-99 too much, uh, later learning that maybe I could have took programming lessons on it, at least early kind of programming lessons. Apple IIs were qu quite prolific at this point in time, so. but what I'm getting at here is 
before I was born, my mom had a Trash 80, like one of the early models. Then after that, we went to all-in-one design. Keyboard, screen, or keyboard, monitor, and, and uh, originally two hard drives, but then later she got two floppy drives. And um, I think my dad should have stepped in there and said, maybe how about a floppy drive and a hard drive? But she just did not want the hard drive in there thought it was more valuable to have two floppy drives. And then after after the Trash 80, the TI-99, uh, this is computing, not so much uh, video games. And uh, after the TI-99, um, really didn't have any computers for a while. Like I said, Apple II was prolific. If I needed an Apple II to use, I would just go somewhere and use an Apple II. Also, something else we begin to see is, um, I, this is weird. This is really weird. I, if, if the so-called, well, IBM, the AT, the XT, where were they? And almost nobody I knew had one. Not till 1994 when some kid bought his IBM, um, these two kids, two different friends, one bought an IBM from a garage sale. The other got it from an old movie theater. And, uh, well, that was that. So, what was my new computer other than using other people's computers? Well, we began to be trained on Apple II GSs in the fourth grade, the fifth grade, and then moving to the Macintosh and Apple II in the sixth grade. And then strictly Macintosh from 7th grade to uh, 11th grade. And then when I was in 11th grade, it was they switched it all to Dell with Windows 95 and uh, Office 97, which I think just came out. And it was like in the middle of the year. They're like, we, we went to Christmas vacation, and then when we came back, that was it. It was all switched out to these crappy Dells that could barely run Windows 95. Okay, so that's the school area, but at home, in 1993, my mom went ahead and purchased a CompuDyne 4SX, and I talked about this in Driver, in the Driver video. One thing I leave out, and I forgot to mention this, that there was no actual way on the CompuDyne 4SX to pop out the um, 486 processor without putting an adapter of some sort that allowed the 586, uh, 5x86 to go into it, which I believe was from Cyrix. I might have that wrong, and I think maybe the Cyrix just popped in there, but I do remember some kind of weird-looking part. I remember Max did this, too, at the time. I don't have any experience with Amiga or Atari for this end. So I remember the Max did this, too, at the time. A person could pop out or override their 040 or 030 processor for a 601E on a Mac. So I do remember that I we had something and somehow it, it got upgraded to um, a 586-ish looking. No, what am I talking about here? Oh yeah, I had a, a some kind of, I don't know, what's it called? A daughter card, an adapter? I, I don't, I don't know. I would have to find these and use these. And they weren't quite common actually. This we went to a little place that is today a thrift store, but back then was like called like Nevada Computer Warehouse or Computer Warehouse of Sahara or something like that, whatever. We went there and the guy there could do it, but he said, I can't install it for blah, 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 blah reasons. So we took it to a place called Anytime Computers, ran by this Peruvian guy who really abused Photoshop for all the wrong reasons with porn. But I, I remember he, like, started making me, like, fix my own shit. And I'm like, oh, please. Uh, the guy didn't even know the difference between um, 
uh, slave and master jumpers. Everyone, nobody seems to know this. I, I don't know. I don't understand why they didn't know anything about the jumpers. I I learned that in school. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, computer class. Yeah, the Mac computer class, and we learned about IDE slave and jumpers. Even though Mac at the time was scuzzy. Um. So this person at this. Anytime computer. That, that's what he called his store. It's not even business anymore. Today, I think, is a Japanese restaurant. And um, uh, I don't have anything against the fella. Uh, I don't. But, uh, man, didn't know anything about computers. He loaded Doom into my RAM. Of course, when I turn off the computer, the Doom is gone. And I'd rather play Doom on my PlayStation 3. Looking at the PS3, that's, that's, I have that old Doom. No, I actually I have Doom BFG, Doom 3 BFG. If I'm going to play Doom 1, 2, and 3, and the new Doom, I have yet to buy for PS4. But I mean, I'm going to do. I'm not going to put it on my computer. My computers are two valuable work tools. So after getting um, that chip installed in in a new hard drive, 420 megabytes. Yeah. I still have this hard drive. It's uh, Connor, the, the first and the worst, as Phil would say, I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't remember what Phil actually said. He does not like Connor brand hard drives. So after what, what we've done with the Compunine is, um, I may have already covered this, but yeah, the, it had the um, 5, 5X86, but I'm just going to call it a 586 from Cyrex was put in there, and then uh, we went ahead and had the uh, the hard drives upgraded the right way. The 120 Maxter piece of crap was C, and the Connor, even more of a piece of crap, was D, and then our CD drive, which they Computer City Techs couldn't even figure out how to install. Computer City... Well, they were owned by Radio Shack, did you know that? Yeah, weird. Um, and they carried Mac, even weirder. Um, just because there's no Macintosh at Radio Shack, who makes candy? Computer City could have had candy totally dominate the landscape if they carried nothing but. Anyways, the um, the techs there were idiots. Then they loaded up three viruses and said we had to remove them. I'm like, well, that's impossible because my virus definitions are up to date. And there weren't any viruses. And those viruses, um, I did catch one. It was on a, a Mega Man floppy disk. Yes, that high-tech expression Mega Man. Uh, and it was the Michelangelo virus, which is completely harmless now. But the other two viruses have never shown their face in my floppies. And if they were to show up today, they'd be so old and dead, they'd be interesting, not harmful. Because they can't do anything on my Mac. Yes, folks, I'm down to one Mac. I peaked at 12. No, really, I did. I had 12 Macs doing all kinds of things, and now I'm down to one. Oh, boy. And um, so after getting the CompuDine upgraded, um, I'm, I'm going to have to say I believe it had... It had... I don't know how it could have 56 megabytes of RAM. Well, I'll point it out again. There's eight slots for the RAM. And if they could take a maximum of 8 times 8 would be 64. That, that sounds outrageous, believe it or not. Um, because there's computers that came out later that had 64 megabytes of RAM maximum. This computer was built in 93, or the motherboard was made in 90, well, 92, actually, and it was assembled in 93, so it has to be 32. There, there, it can't be like 49 or something like that. So I think it had 32 megabytes of RAM. I know that we had a video card with, I, I swear it was real magic was the daughter card, but you know, I can be completely wrong on that. And it could have just been a different brand of MPEG card, or, or, knowing myself, I may have bought real magic, realized the card doesn't fit, 
because it, it might have been a different, again, a different type of card. And I just kept the software and no, uh, whatever. Um, and we had the, um, we used the diamond card as Sound Blaster compatible and so forth and so on. And a lot of good things about it. And the computer lasted until 98. I gave it to somebody and then he did something. The Pentium chip got pulled out and then the, the static destroyed it. And uh, that was the end of that. So I, I went ahead and I took it. Someone bought the motherboard or, or whatever from the CompuDyne and then mailed it back to me. I don't know how they found out who I was because I made I made like eighty dollars selling that thing at this uh, consignment uh, warehouse or little computer store. Oh, I miss this place. Today it's a um, today it's Mr. Pills. <laughs> um, yeah, I used to I used to pay thirty dollars to these guys whenever I'd screw something up, and then they would fix it immediately. But um, the person mailed back, the, so I had the Compunine 4SX motherboard and everything completely stripped. He kept my 586 processor, he kept the, the cards, everything but the Cirrus Logic video card. He even took the BIOS. Where did he get the BIOS? Um, what I was looking at was the last gasp for this. This ended up being put into an IBM, some kind of IBM. Um, I want to say a PS1, but I don't think the motherboard was a PS1. And I need to explain. Um, PlayStation and PlayStation 2 are the names you really should be using when you're around uh, old tech people. Because PS1 and PS2 stands for Personal System 1 and Personal System 2. It's a line of computers from IBM from uh, about 20 to 25 years ago, give or take, maybe even 30 years ago. I think 1987, you know, so about 30 years ago. And. Uh, and so with the um, motherboard was changed out. I remember this motherboard that was put in there was like funky. 49 megabytes of RAM. Well, how was that achieved? Well, two, two or three very large chips, I remember. I remember it had some way, um, I think it could take six megabyte chips or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, my wife's brother, oldest brother, not older than her, just her oldest brother took this apart. Uh, you know what? It served him good. I don't know if he's working in computers or anything today in the Air Force, but whatever he's doing, it served him good because it's the learning process, not so much the technological process, the learning process that has helped him out more in life than anything else. And he thought Archer was funny on FX. It is a funny show. <laughs> so, I... Enough about the CompuDyne. Um, wow. Okay. And um, now I have a, I have Linkslet pulled up. That's a lightweight text browser for the Mac. Um, I prefer BB Edit or the Wanna. No, not BB Edit. I prefer Wannabe, but uh, that doesn't that doesn't run unless I have Classic Environment installed, and I obviously cannot do that. No, no Sheet Saver doesn't count. Or Sheet Shaver. Uh, that doesn't count. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go jump through hoops to get classic on there. Am I using any classic apps? Well, that brings me to this. So we're going back to my computer. Where did we leave off the Compu9 4 SX? When did I use it? I used it from 1993 to 1998. I also had an AT&T Global Assist 363, and uh, that had a. That was upgraded to hell too. We also. I forgot how we upgraded the processor in that. It had a, um, a Media Magic card that also had a phone modem. And um, this had, a, I believe there was PCI slots in this one. I, I do remember putting a very, very ridiculous graphics card in this thing. Uh, ridiculous, and it was PCI. That, that, that's the two keys to remember here. And it, it was it was a fully loaded computer, because I remember this was the only damned computer that would run X-Men Children of the Atom properly. And, um, uh, what version of Windows did I get running on this thing? I even got this thing online. That, that's how good it was. Uh -huh. What version of Windows? I was running something. It was, it was a version of Windows, and somehow I got an N64 emulator to run F0X on it. Just to, I don't know, 
prove to myself or whatever. And then I went ahead and I erased it. I mean, reformatted the whole drive. I think I was trying to put Linux on it. Um, that was my mother's computer. The Compute 4 SX was mine, which was used for games. I did not believe how many games did not like the setup I had, the older it got. But that could be said truthfully of all computers. And then a few Macintoshes walked into my life at this point, and it's been a whirlwind there. Now, I'm looking at this. Um, what if my primary purpose, let's say I was a professional photographer who used just Photoshop and Illustrator, um, and then a, I want to say PageMaker or OmniWeb or something like that. What is it? it go Live InDesign? I can't remember the name of it. There's an Adobe program for HTML. Uh, and uh, I, I want to say PageMaker, but PageMaker doesn't do websites, does it? Forgive me, it's been 20 years since I've used these particular programs. Uh, Illustrator and Photoshop I still use. Um, well, I'm not using it at this moment. But I still use to this day. Oh. Oh, no, I can't remember. I think it's Go Live or InDesign. I think Go Live for HTML InDesign that replaced PageMaker. Well, I had Atlas uh, PageMaker. Freehand? No, I had Atlas Freehand. Okay. Um, this is getting more confusing because I'm, I just am forgetting exactly whatever the hell I had back then. And so what I need uh, today... Um, you know, I, I just want to put one of my old iMacs up with uh, Photoshop 7 and uh, Illustrator blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's all pretty much I need. I'm not doing any HTML. I'm not doing any video editing on it. Or anything. And then I need to go get a Firewire scanner. Uh, it has USB, yes, but USB 1.1. 1, 1 .1. I don't know how well my UMAX uh, 220U would like to use. Uh, USB 1.1. Also, I don't know how long it's going to take to do a high-res scan. I scan at a minimum of 360 DPI, and then from there I, I can up, um, not up or down convert it to whatever I need. So I don't know if it's going to work through the USB 1 ports that are on the original iMac. But if I get a FireWire scanner, that problem is solved. So I, I am considering that. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to find an old scanner. It really is. Uh, I just go online and type in FireWire Scanner for Mac OS 9. That's it. Uh, printing, that's taken care of again by Adobe. Just go ahead and put a PDF writer and make it the primary default printer. That's it. Uh, oh, getting data off and on. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not going to constantly be taking a FireWire drive around with me everywhere. I mean, if I need to upgrade the hard drive, that's the easy way to do it. I don't even necessarily know if I need to upgrade the hard drive in the machine. That might be the easy way. I do want to do a complete reformat of the computer uh, with Mac OS. I figure I might as well put in a giant hard drive in there anyway. And then, you know, if I need something later, I just go and... All I need is the FireWire shell. I don't actually need the FireWire drive. Uh, so if you're wondering, um, just throw a jump drive in there. That's not going to make an 8 gigabyte photograph. Um, you know, I have to determine, well, where is this photograph going that we're looking at here? Um, like, uh, okay, let's say someone hands me a stack of Polaroid. This was common in my wife's family. And, um, yeah, Photoshop will go ahead and adjust the level. It's not really, sometimes it, it really screws up on adjusting levels, but you know, it's more for the RGB experience when using Photoshop for adjusting levels. Alright, let's say my uh, wife's youngest brother, he needs, um, he comes over, he uses it, he scans it in, and then, you know, we put it on the, the jump drive. Why not email, right? Is there a modern email client? for classic Mac OS? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I heard uh, go buy a copy of uh, Eudora, whatever's the latest version for OS 9. I mean, that might work. Um, 
I think it's just easier. Oh, you, why not networking? Um, I don't like to network into uh, OS 10 to OS 9 or OS 10 into Windows. It's actually a pain in the ass. Um, I don't like networking Windows to Windows, just to let you know. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you this. So I would I would just prefer the jump drive method because um, then I can just plug it into a computer that has the ability to print. Which then comes to this. I bought a HP uh, color laser jet 1600 uh, oh what it's 2017 so I bought it uh, 12 years ago I ran out of color ink in 2010 I ran out of black ink eons before I, I, I can afford black ink for this $25 uh, for the economical smart toner or whatever HP calls it I think now it's, I think now it's 40 or 50 dollars but um, either way, that, that well, when I was at the TV station, I had to print out stuff for the FCC. Or if I printed it out to work, the owner of the station, uh, she didn't know jack shit about running a business. She would go bonkers and claim I'm wasting money. But, well, well what, what would you rather have? Um, first off, why weren't we using her laser printer? Well, she just didn't want anyone using it. Second off, um, the FCC says we have to send the schedules in for an audit. What's the FCC looking for? They're looking for what programs aired and when. Okay, I'm redundant. What, what programs aired and when. That's what I meant to say. And PSA. They are just... You, we have to have a certain amount of time dedicated to EI programming and PSA. A certain number of minutes an hour has to be dedicated to PSA. We can forego station ID. Well... Not for the entire hour, but we have actually. This is okay. This is how it breaks down. At the top and bottom of an hour, I have to go ahead and run station ID. Um, I'm allotted X amount of time for myself if I choose to run promos, uh, but I don't have to. Promos are usually filler. They're not really something that most stations would care to run if they didn't have to run it. Promos are filler. But what's not filler is PSAs. And PSAs, and you know, uh, let me just address this real quick. For video game websites that keep saying PSA, that's not a PSA. You're in violation of FCC and FTC rules. Because a PSA is, is something that has to be in, informative to the public. Um, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember the whole thing behind it. But there's this... Um, there's a certain way PSAs are made. So, going back on that, uh, we have to dedicate, I believe, four minutes. No, that sounds too long. Um, two minutes? I think two minutes, an hour to PSA. So these PSAs can be you no know, texting and driving. These can be old PSAs. Drinking and driving kills a friendship. Um, it could be, you know, join the Marines, uh, donate now, uh, so forth and so on. Um, how well are these followed today? I don't know. Under, um, under Obama, I don't know how the FCC runs. When I was working at a TV station, George Bush was president, George W. Bush specifically, and his FCC... Uh, ran like an efficient machine. Uh, under Obama, I don't know. I can tell by the way the stations look and stuff that I don't really see too many PSAs running today. Then, other than that, we're allowed to have the rest of the commercial time. We're doing a barter spot, the same rules apply. And what I didn't like about barter spots is the way a barter spot works is they send me a 30 minute or a one hour show and then I would only get two minutes of programming time for that particular show. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you go to the Las Vegas time machine, no wait, forget that. If you go to Club Mario, there's two Club Mario accounts they have. There's Club Mario and there's Club Mario Lost Episode. It doesn't matter which one, really. Go to either one, and going to the Club Mario, there is uh, 
newer episodes, like number 13, 12 and 13, and I guess you can go to 14 as well, but that one, that, I wouldn't recommend that one. So it's uh, Club Mario number 12 or Club Mario number 13. They have little HD in parentheses because they did do these in HD. Transfer, not, no, the video is not HD. The video is EP, it's 90i. But I went ahead and made the encoding in uh, 1080. Well, actually, no, I made, made it 1920 by 1440. So it's 1440p. And um, with these, um, you'll, you'll notice how the commercials run. Well, uh, the Chips Ahoy, the Mix Studios, all that. And that's, that's part of the barter spot. The benefits of having a barter spot is I don't have to pay for programming. Viacom, the distributor, already had that programming paid for. It also paid for the tape, the postage, the production, and then it sent to me. The other way to do it, the wrong way to do it, is to go and ask for programming. It's not barter. Have it sent, and then I have to pay for every time it plays, I have to pay a certain amount of money. What I can corruptly do, and this is very hard to catch a station doing this, is I can go ahead and I can take a barter spot under contract, cut out all the commercials and put my own in there, selling the time is full. How do they catch me? They don't. A private co company like Viacom, uh, Warner Brothers, or well, Viacom is now called CBS Television Distribution, but they still keep Viacom on some of the things. So forth and so on. The only way they can catch me is by going to the FCC and asking for public information. Um, is my schedule public information? The actual, the actual traffic schedule for broadcasting? No, it's not. That's between me and the FCC. Um, what is public information is like when I air EI programming. That's it. <laughs> and it's actually the only public information I, I have to stop. If I'm not a PBS station, I'm not public. Now, a PBS station, that's a different story. If it's publicly owned, there's a few private owned ones, but if it's publicly owned PBS or um, or American Public Television or um, there is a third, KCET belongs to this, uh, there's a third uh, public television. Uh, there, there's actually a handful. Even NPR has a television division, or they used to. It might have been defunct by now. So, public television, those, those it's public, public, public. You know, you have the right as an American tax-paying citizen to go in and go ahead and get the public file under the Freedom of Information Act, plus under the United States Constitution, you own it. But at a private station, no. So I did take some barter shows, um, and I went ahead and ripped their commercials out so we could make more money. And that's what it comes down to, and I'm about to speak. No, <laughs> well, there's our sound effect for the day. Yes, that sneeze was brought to you by Eric Cartman. Eric Cartman, bringing the sneeze to you. So, there you go, about barter spots whatever. So, I want to go ahead and use my iMac for photographs. It's a perfectly good computer, has a screen, low footprint. That's it. I'm going to put, make photographs on it, and uh, voila. Uh, I believe I can even afford a solid state drive for this. It's amazing. Now, uh, I, I want to take up an hour of your time, but I've already used up 40 minutes. But let's uh, let's move on to uh, video game news. And there isn't any. The uh, Nintendo Switch. I other than Ultra Street Fighter 2 and uh, Mario Odyssey, nothing is screaming out at me. I don't have Skyrim. I had no idea Skyrim was as old as it was. I don't have Skyrim, so maybe I would pick it up on Switch. Uh, other than that, I, you know, okay, 
you can bring up, you know, whatever, this game and that game. Like, I bring that up in the driver one. But they're discount bin fodder. Final Fantasy XV is already discount bin fodder. The world of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Explorers on 3 ds is all discount bin fodder that isn't being sold at the discount bin level. What happens is when the game retains a high price like that, it doesn't sell after a while. And once it doesn't sell, it sits there at the high price, no one buys it, and you know, then eventually the stores lock down the price to move the inventory. Well, that's bad business. I think games should be roaring in at 20 bucks. No, seriously, no video game is worth more than 20 bucks. I don't care about dollar devaluation. I don't care about inflation, stagflation, deflation. I don't care about that. To me, a dollar is a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. So when I look at it and someone says twenty dollars, or if I go out to eat and they want, you know, they want um, over ten dollars. Okay, uh, uh, no, that's a bad value. Let me talk about that. Let me talk about this. It's artificial inflation. It was. Can we get away with it? Let's do it. You saw this in real estate. Where, uh, that's what caused the real estate bubble. It wasn't subprime lending that caused it. I mean, whether or not these people were were defaulting or not. Uh, you know what? I, I don't think a majority of them were until the bank screwed them over. That's what I believe. But here's what uh, here's what I see. Uh, you have a uh, you have a house, and this house should sell for uh, fifty thousand dollars. Or less, maybe forty thousand dollars. It's in a, it's in a rundown neighborhood full of crime. It, uh, you know, it's not a nice place to be. The house squeaks. It needs to be sealed. There's going to have to be, after purchasing it, there's going to have to be, you know, ten thousand dollars out of your own pocket to get the house up to par. Uh, I'll give you an example. I've seen two two-story houses now. Both of them met my bedroom requirement. No, that's not really a problem. They didn't meet my pool table requirement. Uh, but they met my bedroom requirement. And what I noticed is how, how cheap the houses look, how crappy everything is. That's... And when I went up the stairs, the stairs squeaked. Well, that means the wood has been compromised. If I'm walking along the upstairs and the upstairs squeak, rip the carpet out and start start upstairs before removing and replacing the, the new stairs because you don't want to wear out the new stairs in any way, shape, or form. Make sure it replace the wood with with the best wood. Make sure it, these are solid boards, not press boards. Reinforce it, check for any mold, check for any uh, dry rot, any deterioration, and go ahead and replace the floor, the board, the floorboards actually. So that way now the upstairs has integrity. Go ahead and check out the studs. Add studs using, you know, plumber's tape and, and, and uh, uh, joints and binders and couplers, whatever else is needed in the construction field. Properly, you know, drill a hole at an angle, then go ahead and screw it in with a drill to create integrity for the hole. Go ahead and put in between wood glue and stuff. They do these things on the cheap. And by being stingy like that, by scrooging it, uh, what happens then is when I go in there, I'm a big, I'm a big fat guy, okay? If, if I go upstairs and squeak it, that ain't safe. Look, I know they want to turn a profit. So if you want $100,000 for a 50-year-old piece of shit, especially in Las Vegas, then you're going to have to put in $25,000 of complete rehabilitation. Uh, run a smoker and see where, where it's not sealed. Make sure everything is clean, spick and span, spotless. Go outside in the backyard completely. Clean it up, redo it. If the yard isn't done, do it up. Or at least grade it and clean it. Make it look like something to give a damn. This is the, possibly the worst way to sell real estate. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to pull an Alec Baldwin, Glenn, Larry, Glenn Ross. Got to have brass balls. Fuck you, that's my name. Coffee's for closers. But you know what? If I'm going to invest something here... I, I will I will say this about American Pie, the wife of American Pie. 
she went ahead and did her damnedest to try to sell a house that just wouldn't sell. Then, of course, there's the king, and he kinked her. But, um, and, and, and by the way, I think taking a job at, at the burger place, that's, that's brilliant. I, I kind of like to do that myself, uh, just for fun. I don't, I'm not having a midlife crisis, that's for sure. Um, I don't have anything to have a crisis about. But for, for real estate, yes, it does take a pair of brass balls. And yes, the person needs to always be closing. If I walk into your house using that principle, now it's kind of an evil principle, and, but it does apply to business. So, um, you know, I don't care what the, what I, I, A, I, D, A, whatever that means. I but I know that what it means by always be closing, it doesn't necessarily mean closing as in, um, like if I'm a video arcade, I want someone always playing my machines, constantly inserting a coin. If I'm a bookstore, I want people constantly grabbing material, whether, I don't care if it's books, blank journals, a pen, a toy, whatever I sell, and I want them to constantly be at the register. That's what always be closing means. I'm always closing the deal as fast as I can to make the most amount of money. You know, what, what is that equal? That's growth. Always want year and year growth. Well, a real estate agent, sometimes they're just given a, a location. This is something that the movie uh, and play, Glenn, Larry Glenn Ross, deals with, is they're, giving a, they're given a bad location. Now, these guys, though, the difference here is I go and I see the realtor. Now, the first house I saw, the realtor doesn't even speak any fucking English. He's fresh off the boat from Hong Kong or Shanghai or whatever like that. Hey, listen, Chinaman, I can't deal with you if you can't speak English and find out what I want. If the realtor speaks English, and the second realtor I saw, and we did have a, a, a discussion of what was wrong with the house. Actually, he's the third realtor I saw. And... Um, we had a nice discussion about the house. I have nothing but praise for this guy, except he didn't close the deal, but I'm not his boss. He couldn't close the deal because because it looks like the house is half at. The paint job was pissed poor. I even seen this on government buildings. It's like, come on, take some pride into your work here. What are you doing, hiring a bunch of illegal aliens to do the work? Well, that may be the problem, but I want some skilled carpenters, some skilled electricians. I want union guys on my house rehabilitating and every house can be rehabilitated so this guy completely understood what we were talking about as he began to go around the house with us this is a different house like I said they're both two-story houses they both fulfilled my bedroom requirement but this this is ridiculous that I had have to go in and look at this um, yeah I understand fixer upper do I look like a carpenter I work with computers I have about as much carpentry skill as as, 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 uh, as the Brady Bunch. Um, no, I don't have. I mean, what I mean is, I don't have any carpentry skill, and I I don't know where to, would I start. I do know the stairs need to be replaced. I know that whatever was wrong with the closet door, it should have been cleaned. Clean. There there are tools to clean. There's brushes. There's chemicals. Uh, um, there's methods of painting. They use the same paint for the wall on the closet. They use the same paint on the wall for the stair rail. The stair rail is supposed to be either bare wood or something like that. So that way when a person grabs it, it feels comfortable for the grip. So uh, this was all talked about. I would love to have talked about this with the realtor, but the chick didn't know anything because he doesn't speak any English. How am I supposed to deal with that? I want to look at the house. It was, you know, you got to speak English to me. You're going to sell real estate in America. Who, who, who is he selling real estate to? Other fellow chinks? Well, I'm a goop. Well, I'm half goop. So, you know, I'm a goop honky cracker. So, you know, why not go ahead and try to sell to me that way? He could have... We would have bought that house, and believe it or not, squeaks and all, if he could have made the deal. But he couldn't make the deal because he didn't speak any freaking English. Even if he spoke Spanish, I could get along with the damn thing, but he didn't do anything like that. So, you'll lose out like that. 
No, that's why I mentioned the barter spot. See, it's all about closing. You gotta close the deal. Okay, so what what does this have to do with Nintendo Switch and stuff like that? Well, it, it has a lot to do with it. Nintendo's not closing the deal on my part. Neither has Sony with the PS4. I bought the PS4 for you YouTube viewers, believe it or not. And when I mean buy it, I didn't buy it. I borrowed money to buy it from family. The PS4 was for you all so I could go ahead and make new videos. But as it turns out, my views are so low that it, it ain't worth it. And no, I don't I do not do videos for art's sake or anything like that. You, you got the wrong person. Art is done for money. Who said that? Walt Disney. Make the art, the money will follow. So obviously I'm not making good works of art. However, I do know that uh, I, I'm an opinionated fella. Uh, oh, and by the way, don't don't play the race card on me because the race card is only meant to be played when I'm playing uh, NASCAR, Daytona USA, Virtual Racing, Indy 500, Super Mario Kart, something like that. That's the race card. F Zero, Stunt Race FX, Outrun, Outrunners, uh, Gran Turismo. You get a joke there. I hope you do. Anyways, I want to wrap this up and. Um, what I'm really looking at here is, you know, where where do I, what do I do with the Nintendo Switch? I mean, what do I do about it? I mean, I, I would have to say, well, I, there's a good variety of games, actually. There actually is a good variety of games on both Wii U and 3DS. It has been extremely lackluster. I own more DS games for my 3DS than I do 3DS games. And some games I've never seen for sale. Um... I've heard there's Ninja Gaiden games for both DS and 3DS. Never seen them. We do have a Ninja Gaiden game on Wii U. I heard that there's a Tekken game for 3DS. I've never seen it. I heard that there's a Dynasty Warriors-like game. I think it's Warriors Orochi 3 Hyper or something like that. I've never seen it. I'm going to buy it, but I've never seen it. I have to order it. That means I have to save for it. And I also have, um, I did find Samurai Warriors uh, for the 3DS. I, I just happened to be rummaging at Zia Records, which I really don't plan on going back to for quite a while. I, I, I'm, I'm not really watching movies. Um, I'm not, and when I listen to music, I mean, I really don't know what I listen to. Uh, I'm still listening to the stuff I listened to in high school, so there's that. I, I just don't listen to new music. I have. I do have new records and stuff like that. Uh, records. Well, that shows, shows you were not buying my music. Well. Oh, excuse me. I need to take a sip of some liquid here. Ugh. Ooh, wash that down. Something came up and broke. So excuse me for that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't... I don't... I, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it with the Switch. Um, will the Switch be a success? I think it'll probably sell, like, you know... Honestly, it'll probably sell 100 million units over the course of its lifetime. At the same time, I encourage Nintendo, just keep the, the Wii Shop channel and the Wii U eShop running. I don't know why they got rid of the DI DSi wear shop. That was that was stupid. Um, or maybe they can bring all these games over to the Switch and it's not a problem. Like restoring the C64 games I was enjoying on the Wii Virtual Console. Moron. But as, as a consumer, it's not ringing confidence to me on these games. Absolutely not. Other than Ultra Street Fighter 2 and Mario Odyssey, I'm getting Breath of Wind on the on the Wii. That means, you know, what that tells you I'm not even getting a Switch this year. I'm not. Super Mario Run was a terrible game. Is a terrible game. I've been reluctant. I have downloaded, but I have not played Fire Emblem Heroes. I think that's what it is on on my iPad. Just awful, awful, awful game. Super Mario Run. And then uh, my video got flagged for copyright by Nintendo. It's like, 
come on, guys. I gave you guys some promotion. You, you backstabbed me on this. <laughs> you know what? Say what you will. Sony and Microsoft has never, ever, 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 knock wood, flagged me for my PlayStation or Xbox video. Now, I've been flagged by Konami, never Capcom. EA never has flagged me, though I have my own personal problems with me. I mean, they are personal. But that, that's not the point. On, on the YouTube site, I have never been harassed by EA, Ubisoft, um, Infogrames, or Atari, or whatever they're calling themselves. The other Atari, WB Game. Um, Capcom, no. Most Konami, no, but no. Uh, but Capcom, no. Jalico, whatever's left of them, no. Um, Tecmo, Koei, no, nobody. I mean, who's harassed me the most, Nintendo? No. Um, SNK's never harassed me. I've had people claim SNK stuff. Uh, gaming history source and retro core and some problems with Sega. I never had any problems with Sega, so I really don't know which way that's going. But why do this? What 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 was Nintendo thinking? Oh, we're gonna go and take people's monetization from their YouTube videos to fly in our pocket. Well, that bodes ill will because, see, that's the equivalent of going to my friend and saying, "Hey, you, you watch them play Super Mario Run on his TV. You watch them play Super Mario Odyssey on his TV. Give us some money." That's the equivalent of it. It is their content, uh, but it is my gameplay. So it being my gameplay, that is creating uh, new art for prior art. And then we have to get in a fair use thing. I would have to go to court. And it, all this stuff. It's not worth it. It's easier to either to just privatize it while I have the dispute going or just to take it down and do what I'm currently doing with a different video, which you'll see eventually. It takes hours and hours to render. That's why you haven't seen it yet. But that's what I'm probably going to do. I'm not even going to bother here. Nintendo's not worth it. And uh, that's coming from somebody who subscribes to three Nintendo <laughs> magazines. Oh. <laughs> Um, and only buys Nintendo for everyone, be just because of the reliability of the products. I would like to get a PS4 for people uh, if I could. Apply. I can actually afford them now on layaway. Um, I have the ability to pay for that. But the problem with the PS4, as I've seen when I gave somebody a 360, it just leads to more problems. They're too complicated of devices to use for for family. You have multiple kids, multiple people, and they all want their own profiles. Each profile has to have an Xbox. No, that's just whatever. Or in Sony's case, it, it's too complicated. The first two PlayStations had it right. Just turn it on and go. That's the way I see it. Uh... I am not knocking the games, I'm not knocking the architecture of the systems, I, you know, any system from any of the companies, or any any devices, if it works, it works. Like, like Angry Video Game Nerd said in episode 102, do whatever that works for you, works for you. And that, that's the truth, if a person likes playing on, on an old NES, and that's probably why the NES Classic is sold out it's so much so I had to go and buy a Famicom classic only to not have the games I want on there like punch out <laughs> or Final Fantasy 1 um, not a big deal I own the original cartridge actually I own two versions of the original cartridge uh, and I have it downloaded on, on Wii Virtual Console and I have it downloaded on not a big deal for me to play Final Fantasy. Okay, so that's coffee for Binky at gmail.com. C O F F E E, number four, B I N K Y at gmail.com. And you might consider my Patreon. That's coffee for Binky as well. I took up an hour of time. I robbed one hour of your life so you can listen to me. And you, you be good out there. You do good for your fellow man. Okay, you give a little bit to charity, you give a little bit to yourself. 
and the rest you put into savings because eventually you're going to get old and you have to retire.